All right, guys, good morning. It's uh, early. We left the house in the, I don't know, what was it, 1.30? Yeah. We all met, and uh, it's now 4 a.m., a little after 4, and uh, we're out here towards Western Maryland. Mitch and Jason got us uh, some public area to check out. So we're going to kind of all depart, everybody go our separate ways, get up high ground to lookouts, and uh, try to have vantage points to here, and hopefully work plenty of birds. So. Yeah, we're not sure. We're not sure what numbers are like out here as far as bird numbers. Um, <laughs> we, <went out> <laughs> we don't know anything about this area at all. We just know it's public land. It's big, and uh, you know some of the things that jump out at us, uh, like in, where we hunt in PA. You know, you put uh, a lot of distance and topography between you and parking areas and roads, and usually that means uh, low pressured, you know, animals. So. That's what we looked for. We found an area that's got a lot of topography, a lot of distance, and we're going to go um, high and try to find what's going on here. So we'll see you guys in the woods. We're going to all go our several ways. We're all running cameras today, so this could be just a cornucopia of nonsense. Who knows? It could be a bust. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mentioned why we did what we did this morning because we didn't know the area we wanted to get the high points to listen um, we also favored the southeast side of these ridges because yesterday there was a pretty strong 20 25 mile per hour uh, I think gusts up to 30 out of the north northwest so we wanted to try to favor those south southeast sides of these ridges, thinking birds would have tucked in there to get out of the wind. That's why we kind of went to where we did it this morning. Um, so far, nothing yet, but I'm just gonna keep working this uh, ridge line out and listening, see what happens. Still walking this logging road out here, and uh, it went over the top of the ridge. It's starting to drop down the backside now. This will be the north face. It's kind of fucked going over too. Looks like there's a field up ahead here. Got a clear cut of some kind. See down through there. I just glassed down there. I didn't see anything, so we'll ease that way and keep listening and looking, trying to find these birds. Across the clear cut, he's gobbling. Oh, he's down. He's down. I'm gonna work right through this hill and set him. Right over here. Hope he comes in. Sound like a good one.
the hell? No way. I thought I had a clear shot of him and I clipped these monkey vines right here. I'm so fired up right now. <sighs> that sucks so bad. I joked with Mitch that I needed more ammo today. I didn't mean it. What the crap? <sighs> that was a beautiful bird. Beautiful. <sighs> what <in the> world? <sighs> well, what happened? I was working that ridge out. I was working that ridge on that logging road. And I could see the clear cut coming up, so I slowed up, you know, glassed it. And as I was kind of just checking things out, this bird hammered across the clear cut, like the other side. And I used the, some bushes through the clear cut to kind of hide my movements, got across it, got over here set up. I called like only a few times and he was hot. And he popped up out there about 50 yards. And he got behind these blowdowns here. I mean, I'd, if it wouldn't be for these couple of vines here, this setup, oh man, it's too terrible. I wish I would've, he'd have come out here to the left, maybe 10 more steps and it would've been just perfectly clear. But I just, I rushed it, I got excited, and I missed. Oh, I'm so pissed. I'm so pissed. <sighs> what the world? I hate doing that. I hate it. That kind of trapezoid shape there. Actually, you see that sap dripping off the vine? You got the, like, kind of like the, there's a triangle right there. I shot under that, like in that triangle right there, which is only about a few inches. But you can see beyond that, there's that thick stuff, and it was right there. It's only 20, 25 yards. I should have left him come. If you'd have came just through this stuff, gotten here, money. Every year, I learn stuff. And every year, I just, when you do learn these lessons, you just feel like such a rookie. Oh, man. It's ridiculous. That was such a beautiful turkey. He came through there full strut. I don't know if you could see him because the camera was set up just to my right. Good morning, it's uh, about 2.25 on April 28th, and I'm running a solo mission here out to Western Maryland, trying to move into the areas, um, well at least part of the area we hunted last week, where I missed the turkey, and um, there were some other birds around too, so it seemed like it was quite a few turkeys gobbling out there. Um, they didn't gobble on the roost last week, uh, it wasn't until about 8.30, but we kind of had a weird weather system move in just before that, so it might have had something to do with it. Um, hopefully this morning, they do some gobbling on the roost, and I'm able to make some plays on them, um, you know, before shooting light, get in their bubble, and maybe uh, make something happen early. It'd be great. Uh, got a couple hours of driving ahead of me here, and then I'm um, going to be hitting the woods.
cross your fingers for me and I'll do the same and we'll see what happens here. All right, I'm on this high ground here. See, I'm on top of the mountain here. It's all through here. Just listening. Haven't heard anything yet. The sky is getting pretty orange. I got about 200 yards, 250 yards to go to where I missed that bird last week. And I mean, he didn't gobble on the roost, but he kind of got to that strut zone and then started gobbling. So I think I want to make a beeline for there, get set up, just kind of hang tight. It's only 250 yards. Should be able to hear pretty much everything like I'm doing now, but at least I'll be in a spot that I know that at least one bird felt comfortable going enough to fly down. And it might be a, you know, a productive way to kind of hang out for a little bit. Let's get going. Okay, this bird's, they're just gobbling again. He's out that way pretty far. I'm gonna not go right to him. I'm gonna kind of jayhawk get some height on elevation here. Get on this open area up here, up top. Try to work him around this point. I don't want, if he gets called too much, I think he's gonna come up high here and just kind of look down try to find me. Piece of metal that goes in there fell out. Okay. This little screws are on the key. Just a bit. Okay. Okay. Deal was there. He was coming on a string right to me. He got to about 40 yards, maybe 35. 
and he must have picked up something he didn't like. I don't know. I don't even saw this camera. I was laid down real low, like almost behind the blowdown. It couldn't have been me, I don't think. But <sighs> he turned and started going away, and he kind of angled up the hill. And then the camera was in the way. I couldn't pivot. I tried to get him the gun on him, but couldn't get turned on him because I hit the camera. And he popped the other side of the tree, then he was even like 10 more yards further. Probably pushing the 60 yard mark, I don't know, but probably shouldn't have shot. What is going on this year? Good morning, it's May 21st. Um, plan this morning is to just kind of pop around to some of the public areas that are within maybe a half hour of my house. Haven't seen anything real promising around here lately or even heard any gobbles, um, even from afar. But um, conditions are right. I want to just pop around here, um, check different properties. Um, honestly, I only have like an hour and a half, two hours because I had to put my son on the bus at 8.15. So, um, Gonna hit maybe two or three properties and come back, but hoping to just uh, maybe get eyes or ears on a, a bird and uh, and be able to make a play on him. <coughs> okay, it's a bird cover on top of a little hill here. He's only at about 100 yards. I stop quick. I didn't really call him. He wasn't. He even gone a couple times. He might have hands with him. Anyway, here he is. Put the beard on that thing. Heck yeah, dude. Holy crap, look at these hooks. Look at them hooks, dude. Yes! Oh yeah, baby. That's a freaking good turkey. It's been a long season. 
so far. I had a lot of trouble with birds heading up, and that one cooperate, not talking much after the roost. I had some issues with um, other hunters. A lot of issues here this year with bumping deer that have run toward birds I was working, screwed that up. But every once in a while it comes together. <clears throat> it did today. What a beautiful turkey. And this thing is nice. Beautiful fan. Look at that fan. And these hooks, oh my goodness. I mean, they're some of the better ones I've ever got. <sighs> I am jacked right now. I'm excited. <clears throat> I'm sorry, guys. I, I really need to, like throw some money to Buddy and have him video me because uh, I had a heck of a time doing this. So many times this year, I was so worried about getting the footage that usually I'm in kill mode. Like when a bird's coming in, I just get it done and it works. But when you're running a camera, <clears throat> I don't know, I'm probably preaching to the choir for a lot of you guys who actually do this stuff. But when you're running the camera, you're so focused on getting that footage that you often forget to, to take those, you know, those quick opportunities because, you know, it's not always those TV hunts where they pop out and strut for five minutes in front of you and give you 30 opportunities. Two or three times this year I had to take rush shots, well, twice in Maryland, and uh, just didn't pan out. I'm a big follower of uh, the Pinati Project, and uh, <laughs> one of the things I'm really guilty of when I, is uh, I'm pretty fast paced, so when I, um, when I hunt and when I get it done, I sometimes forget to stop and savor the moment. And uh, Dave Owens uh, with the Panati Project, he, um, I've always liked in his videos how after he gets it done, he spends a little time just kind of relaxing and enjoying the moment. And uh, one of the things he likes to do is have a cheap cigar. So I picked up these uh, Swisher Sweets. I'm not a cigar smoker, but I'm going to, in the spirit of Dave Owens, I'm going to crack into this pack, light one of these up, and kind of just taking the rest of this, uh, or a little bit more this morning here with this, this beautiful turkey, this beautiful day, and just be happy with uh, where I'm at right now. Feels really good, and uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I make these packages child-proof. That's why I can't get into it. Now the next question is, where is my lighter at? I usually keep a lighter in my vest, but <laughs> good luck finding it. Oh, bingo, jackpot. Now, does it work? Yeah, I get used to this. What an awesome day.